You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Go ahead and tell them here today, you are worthy, Jesus. Go ahead and tell him you are worthy here today. He desires to hear our voice. When you're mad at somebody, they can hear your voice. When you want to get your point across, they can hear your voice. Let your point be made to God here today. Don't keep it in here. That does nothing. Don't keep it up here. That does nothing. But with the mouth, with your mouth, with your mouth, profess here today, I love you. I need you. I desire you. Lord, I give me you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever your problem is, I praise you anyway, Jesus. Come on. Don't sit there like a bump on a log, but open up yourself. Speak to your God. Speak to your God. Speak to your God. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to share something with the church here today. So you got to realize what it's all about. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And God said, let there be light. And six days into it, God made man in his own image. In the image of God created him, both male and female created he them. But something happened. You see, there's a point in time, the Bible says that in the cool of the night, God will come down and he would walk with Adam. And he would talk with Adam. He would commune with Adam and Eve. God wanted a relationship with this creation that he made that wasn't like this, but was like this. He would walk hand in hand with man. But something happened. Sin crept in. Sin crept in. Not because of God's desire. All he wants is that communion with you. But sin became a barrier between you and God. But God said, you know what? I love you so much. I can't stand to be away from you. So he made a way to where we can come once again back into communion with him. By his grace and by his mercy, it was no good thing in you. you ain't, it, it wasn't because you have money or don't have money. It wasn't because you woke up today and you got dressed today. None of that matters. It's only because he loves you and he wants to be brought back into relationship with you. That's why Calvary had to happen and it was only because of God's grace. His grace says, I have got to make this right. And so one day, God came. And the Bible says that Jesus is going to save us from our sin. That's the only purpose for Jesus to come down on this earth it's because of one three letter word s i n and that same thing reigns prevalent here today but calvary came and jesus the bible says that i know that we got sunday school here today but this is just a paraphrase here today because the lesson talks about the grace of god and the bible says that all have sin and fall short of the glory of god the bible says you and i every last one of us born on this earth was born in sin and shaped 
in iniquity. And that's the thing that keeps us away from God. God cannot enter into an unrighteous covenant with us. He cannot do it. But he wants you so much. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He wants that relationship so badly that he says, I have got to go down and I have got to make this right. Why? Because you're worth it. Drugs ain't worth it. Alcohol ain't worth it. Tommy and Jenny, whoever your boyfriend or girlfriend is, they're not worth it because they won't die for you. But Jesus says, I don't want this separation anymore. And so he came down, rolled himself in flesh. Why? Brother Wahlberg, as much as I love you, I can't go to Calvary for you. I can't die for you because I was born in sin. Sister Sarabia, you can't die for me because you were born in sin. You can look around this room and ain't none of y'all can die for the other because we were all born in sin. And that's why Jesus says, the Father, he says, I have got to robe myself in flesh and I've got to make it right for my creation. So in the incarnation, God became a man and dwelt among us. And the Bible says that he was in all points tempted as you and I yet without sin. Jesus was the only one that didn't deserve Calvary. You and I deserve to be nailed to a cross. But on Calvary, Jesus, they didn't kill him. But he said, I give up my life. And he says, I will raise me up again. Why? Because he wants that Garden of Eden relationship with you. And he promises his, his disciples in the book of John chapter 10, he says, one day you won't see me anymore. You see me right now, but there's going to be a day and time when you will not see me anymore. I will not be with you, but I will be in you. And God who became a man, went to Calvary and laid down the flesh on the cross and came back in the form of the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of you. It's the same God that said, let there be light. It's the same God that came down. It's the same God that right here, right now, says if you, if you will open up your heart, I will come on in and I will dine with you. There is one God and his name is Jesus. All throughout creation he desires for you to know his name. Because realize this. After today's Pentecost Sunday. And this is the day over 2,000 years ago. Where people... We're standing around feeling convicted in their heart because they had sin in their life. And Peter preached unto them and let them know that your sin is going to send you straight to hell. And what you do when you, when you crucified the, the Messiah on that cross, uh, what you did, my friends, uh, you crucified the Holy One. Regardless, they were convicted in their heart. And they asked a question that resonated all over, all over humanity from then until now. Men and brethren, what must I do? Do to be saved. Saved. Translation, free from sin. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. I acknowledge my sin. I don't hide it 
I don't justify my lying. I don't justify my stealing. I don't justify my, my, my running around. I don't justify my drinking. I don't justify my drug abuse. But I confess it before you, Jesus. I admit that I am a sinner. And God, I ask you to forgive me. That is true repentance. Not because somebody walked in and caught you. But because your heart says, this is not right. And I need to make it right. And so God says, ask and you shall be forgiven that's what we've got to do and he commands us to be baptized in the name of Jesus the Bible says we are buried with him in baptism this water washes away our sin not because there's something special in the water, but because of the name that is called at the name of Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. That is why when you go down into that water, it has got to be in the name of Jesus. Father is not a name, because that's what I am. Son is not a name, because that's what I am. Holy Spirit, it's not a name. I got a spirit within me. It ain't holy all the time, amen. But it's not a name. It is a description of an entity. But Vincent Ivanhoe Price, that's my name. And the name of Jesus is what makes the difference. So if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, you have got to make yourself right with the word of God and say, Jesus, I've acknowledged my sin. Now I need to bury it. And that's what we do. But then the Bible says God meets you at the point of your need. And so the Bible says that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You receive it because it's a gift. He gives it to you because he loves you. But here is the purpose. Because with his spirit within you, it renews your life. It purifies your life. And the Bible says that the spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And so the Bible lets us know that where we were separated, when you get the Spirit of God in you, when God fills you with His Holy Spirit, then realize that it's a little bit of God on the inside, renewing this man on the outside. Why? Not so you could come here. I said all of that to say this. Not so you could come here and sit on a bump on a log, but so you can come here and do that. And God's Spirit on the inside reaches out to the Spirit on the outside, and God makes a connection with you and what was lost in the Garden of Eden is renewed once again it's renewed once again and that is the purpose that's the purpose of Calvary that's the purpose of grace that's why we're here today realize that regardless of how you grew up Regardless of what you knew or what you know, you're going to come to a point in your life where God's going to reveal to you what you need to do. And the things that makes us more important than an angel is the fact that we get to choose every day what we do. But he's going to tell you, my friend, choose me. He's going to tell you, give up the life of sin He's going to tell you, lay down on the cross and allow me to get into your life and allow me to renew you and allow me to save you. He's going to tell you what you need to do. But the choice, my friend, is always going to be yours. He's going to say, come on to me. But the choice to come or to stay is yours. He's going to say, raise up your hands and worship me because in the worship of his saints, that's where God comes down and he abides in the praises of his people. So when you worship him, you are creating an atmosphere so God to come down. So he's going to tell you to do it. 
but the choice to do it is yours the choice to do it is yours that will never change never change I want to encourage you here today you don't know what's gonna come up tomorrow but today you have a choice brother Brad today you have a choice we all have a choice here today but recognize the choice that you make is going to dictate your final destination young or old brother Sam whatever choice you make is going to dictate where you go but Jesus says I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also if you've already been filled with the Holy Ghost and there's some stuff that's been moving up in your life regardless of what it is or regardless of how bad it is recognize that you have a choice to make here today to say God forgive me I put it underneath the blood renew me restore me the Bible calls it a regenerating spirit my friend for a reason because you're gonna fall you're gonna fall but when you fall down Jesus says a just man fall seven times but he gets back up again you're not gonna be standing on the mountaintop I, I, I hate to break it to you it ain't gonna be an easy road it's not gonna be a cakewalk but oh my friend heaven is worth it heaven is worth it Jesus is worth it salvation is worth it so you can enjoy days times and life right now and pay for it later but realize contrary to the popular belief right now there will be no partying in hell it won't happen you ain't gonna be hanging out with your buddy in hell it's not gonna happen I hate to break it to you but you gotta read the Word of God because y'all ain't gonna go down together and say hey you know what we done messed up on earth but you and I we down here together no my friend if anything y'all gonna be biting at each other's neck and trying to slay each other for why did you get me down here why did you lie to me but realize this is not gonna be the day because you're gonna know right here right now that you have got to redeem yourself you've got to redeem your heart you've got to lay out yourself before Jesus and say God take all the sin away from me take all these lies away from me take this filth out of my life make me pure <laughs> Jesus Hallelujah. there is a call for something more there's a call for something more ha <laughs> Jesus There's a call for something more here today. The title of the lesson is Grace and the Free Offer of Salvation. Now, I'm not going to go into the lesson here today. And I don't apologize for it. Because I think if I do, it would be a waste of your time. And I'm not going to do that. But I do want to say that we who are here right now, we have an opportunity that we cannot blame anyone else for not taking. We cannot blame, hallelujah, Jesus. As much as I love my wife, I can't blame her if I come to this house and I don't worship God. As much as I like to feel right in the things that I do, if I come here and I'm mad at somebody else and I ignore God, there's none of us in this place here today that will be okay with somebody ignoring you 
because of something someone else did to them. There's no one here that will say, you know what? That's okay and that's right. With somebody pushing you off to the side because somebody else didn't give them something that they wanted. And if I look at you and I say to you, you know what? Because you didn't give me five bucks, I'm not going to talk to you. You're going to look at me and you're going to say, you weren't even a friend in the first place. But oh, why do we do that to the most high God? Why? Because we do. We justify with the things that we want and we don't get. We justify it in the moments where he held back from us for our own good. And we don't like it. And so we're mad at him because God, I needed and I wanted this job and you should have given it to me. But Jesus is looking down the spans of time and he knows that if he had given you that job, then five years down the road, you would have turned your back on him and then he's going to have to stand on judgment day and cast you in a lake of fire. And he says, no, just like Calvary, he says it once again, I love you too much to give you that job or to move you. So I reject it. I reject it that prayer because I love you too much but then we we're mad and we're upset because it's not fair because life is not fair can I be real with you all here today life is not designed to be fair because the Bible says that the devil is the prince of the power of this air. He's got rain in this earth right now. And the only thing that stands in his way is a place like this and a man like that. Or you and I who's got the spirit of God within us. We stand in the way of the enemy. So realize if God says no, it's a reason to thank him. Because a yes would have led to your destruction. We were designed to worship. My friend, you're going to worship something. You're going to worship something. But Jesus says in Isaiah, Isaiah, he says, place no other God beside me. He says, my glory will I not give to another. So anything that you worship and that you've taken and you've put before God and you've given God an ultimatum, if you want me, do this, that thing is your God. And Jesus, hallelujah, says, I will not share my glory with another. Whatever it is that you need or want, if it's here to where you say, God, I will worship you if. Realize that that thing is your God and you can barter with it all day long. But Jesus will not come down to that level because he is God almighty and he don't need nobody else. We need him. By his grace, he's made a way. We are in an entitled world. Hallelujah. And I'm getting ready to be done, Pastor. But we're, we're in a world here today that is all about entitlement. We in this country, we're all about entitlement. I deserve. I deserve. I deserve. I deserve. That's what gets us in trouble. Because we only know that we deserve the things that we see. You can't see sin. You can't see death. You can see the byproduct of death. When somebody kicks the bucket, you ain't seeing death. You're seeing the end result of death is a carcass on the ground. You can't see it moving along the pews. You can't see it hovering over your life or over your family. You can't see sin and death trying to snuff you out in the midnight hour and the angel of God standing guard over you while you're cursing him out. He's saying, you can go ahead and curse, but it ain't your time right now. I stand between you and death. I stand between you and 
and death and the devil is coming at him and you're coming at him and God stands in the midst anyway. That is grace. That is a picture of grace. Grace is not, well, Jesus, you're going to forgive me, so I'm just going to go out there and do my thing. I'll be right back. That's not grace. That's not grace. Grace is God standing on your behalf when you and I don't even deserve it. It's, it's defined as unmerited favor. There are churches out there that will tell you that grace is do what you want, say what you want, live how you want to live, and then come back and God's going to get you into heaven. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And guess what? You, you don't even have to answer me, but doesn't that appeal to you? Doesn't that sound good to you? Well, hey, if it sounds good to you, you've got to verify with the Word of God. And the Word of God said one day death and hell is going to be bound up and cast in a lake of fire. So hey, my friend, it may sound good but in the end it's not gonna be good I've got to choose today Jesus I'm gonna live for you hallelujah pastor sir I'm gonna turn the service back over to you here today the lesson took a totally different turn But realize that if God's going to deviate from something for you who are here today, then realize that, hey, the schedule didn't get messed up. Realize that God stepped in and he wanted to speak a specific word to you that wasn't in line with this lesson here today. So what you have got to do from this point on is make your life right with God because the Bible says we will be without excuse. Nothing you can come up with is going to be good enough. God, I didn't have a father. The Bible says that we will be judged by the saints. So you will stand and you'll say, God, I did not serve you because my daddy beat me. I didn't serve you because my daddy was an alcoholic. And God's going to say, okay. And God's going to do this. Pastor Daryl Scott, please step forward. Did your dad beat you? Yes, Lord. Was your dad an alcoholic? Yes, Lord. What was the end state of what he did to you? How, how did he ruin your life? Well, Lord, I gave it all over to you. And I became a preacher of your gospel. I chose you. Pastor Scott, you may step back. So and so, for your disobedience to the word of God and your choice to choose humanity and to choose your own desires and your own will over the word of God, I sentence you to eternity in hell. Depart from me, I never knew you. That's how church, this is no joke. It's real. And every last one of us will stand there. So you could go home today and uh, get you a whiteboard and you write down every single excuse that you could come up to as to why you didn't serve God. And then you take a black permanent mark and you write an X over it. And big words that say no good because none of them will stand. None of them. God has given you this day for you to enjoy, yes, but more importantly than that, it's for you to come closer to Him and into a deeper relationship with Him. But the choice is all yours. Pastor Scott.
It's Pentecost Sunday. Many, many look at the church as a bunch of rules. You know, any place you go to, there's rules. You go to Scandia, you don't follow the rules, you get kicked off the go-kart, right? You go on golf courses, there's rules. If you're going to go to heaven, you got to follow God's rules. Otherwise, it'd be anarchy. And Pentecost was meant to be good news for you. Every time I walk into this place, and I, I love, I love having a picture of Reverend and Sister AJ Walston up there on the on the back back wall. Every time I walk into this place, I'm reminded of two individuals that, despite what was against them, they embraced Pentecost as good news for their life, for their family, and they allowed it to change the direction of their family. See, there's a big, bigger things at stake than just your needs right now. God's not only looking at your salvation, but He's looking at the salvation of your children, your grandchildren, your, your great grandchildren. And we get wrapped up in what about my needs? And you could change the course of your family you can do it you could be the one to step forward and say I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some changes in my family because when the Bible says for this promise is unto you and to your children and all that are it means to my children my grandchildren my great-grandchildren this is for all future future generations we're all gonna make mistakes thank God for his grace and mercy But I want to open up this altar this morning before we leave. I know we had an awesome move of God in this place already. But I want to, I want to open up this altar. Micah chapter 7 verse 8, it says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. I love making the devil look stupid. Can I say that word? Because I'm going to tell you, the devil loves to laugh at you when you're making mistakes and you're failing God and you're failing yourself. And he's there just laughing and cutting up. But I want to, I want to remind him that every time I fall, I am going to rise. That sister... Desiree, that's something that's something Satan cannot do is arise back into the glory of God. We can. Amen. I wonder if we can stand in this place, please, if we can stand in this house. I want to open up this altar today for somebody. It, it, it's, it's Pentecost Sunday. Don't look at, oh, well, it's just a bunch of rules I got to follow and I can't do this and I can't do this. You know what, Sister Doherty, I've said this a lot. I could drop this mic. I could walk out of this place. I could go straight to, I know where all, a lot of the drug houses are here in Barstow. I know. I could find me a bar. I could find me a drug house. I could go out and cheat on my wife, be unfaithful and everything. I, 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 I have the power to do all that. I don't have a force field around me that keeps that stuff out of my body or keeps me from doing but I have a choice. And Pentecost was meant to be a, a way out. A better way. A way that you wouldn't have no regrets. I told Brother Fargo the other night, when I die, I don't want to have any regrets. No regrets. 
I wish I would have. I wish I would have. I wish I would have. I don't want no regrets when I, when I pass away. And I want to open up this altar for somebody. You need to say, well, you know, I've made mistakes. Yeah, we've all made mistakes. Get over it. That's why Calvary happened. Don't wallow in that particular area of your life. We've all made mistakes. But I want to open up this altar for somebody who's ready to put their mistakes behind them. Put them under the blood of Jesus Christ. Let God's grace and mercy begin to flow into your life and let his blood begin to cover your sins. The Bible says that it covers a multitude of sin. And I want to open up this altar today. If you, if you have...